Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and I am here today with my weekly vlog. Today we are going to be talking about how you can assign function within your creative space to facilitate ease, accessibility, and inspiration. I think oftentimes we are captivated to create a Pinterest worthy space that really only serves other people. And in turn, then we end up with a space that either doesn't function well for us or we're actually intimidated to use because then so much effort and work will be required to put it back together. It's like that fine china. You never get it out and you never use it. I think our creative spaces are inherently messy. Creativity as a process is messy. And therefore, your space should be designed to accommodate and hold your particular craft. For most of us, um, I think sewing is our craft, not that you don't have other interests. I certainly do. This channel is geared towards sewing, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna show you around my space. The other mistake that I think people make is they assume that their space won't change. And just as you have continued to learn more skills and add more materials and tools and all of those things. Each piece that you add is going to change your space. Um, the cam press is a great example of that. The press by itself is not that big. It doesn't take up that much space, but it comes with other things like little rivets and little snaps and attachments and things that they're so tiny, but if I misplace one of the dies, then the snap press doesn't function or I could waste a lot of time looking for it. Another point with that press is it's heavy. So you don't wanna to have to move that all around your space, right? Um, you'd never wanna drop that by accident on your toe or for that matter, drop it at all because it's probably going to damage whatever it lands on. So um, using the cam press as an example, I integrated this really fabulous functional tool into my space, but I didn't do it with the mindset of how's it going to look. I did it with the mindset of how's it going to function. And sewing is largely a functional craft. So I would argue that your space needs to function before you consider how it looks. Not that you can't have pretty things in your space. I think you should. I think everything in your space should inspire you and you should be able to find beauty within your space. In fact, if there are things that you don't think are beautiful, get them on out of there, donate them, give them away. Let somebody else who might find beauty in that enjoy those objects. So anyways, I, you know, have transitioned out of a commercial studio space into my home space. It's been several months since I said goodbye to the commercial studio. And I'm just now finally getting to feel like this new space has that energy and that vibe that I enjoy working with. And I think the big delay was in the fact that I was trying to make this look a certain way when I really needed to just hone in on how do I want to use the space. My organization process always begins the same and I've done this for years and years. I use graph paper and I typically will try to create like a floor plan, a sketch of what I want the space to look like. 
And so the other night I was doing this for this very space and I'm just ripping off page after page, throwing away and I'm getting so frustrated. It is not a space limitation. It's not a furniture or fixture limitation. I literally have everything I could possibly need to create an amazing space. Why can I not make this space amazing? Then it occurred to me, go ahead and cut out each little piece of furniture. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just label it um, and then try to make it kind of size proportionate to the other pieces, right? And then uh, use your graph paper to label the important parts of the room, like the windows or the doors, the things that you don't necessarily want obstructed. So believe it or not, all of these little pieces are in this space and they're actually not that little, like they're pretty major pieces of furniture. And they are pieces that I've collected over the years, right? So again, that's where I think the hang up is, unless you're starting completely from scratch and you can order white everything and you can only bring in the things that you're absolutely gonna use, right? Which nobody starts like that. Who in the world would fill up a space and not even, you know, and be new to sewing, right? Um, the only instance might be like if you suffered some kind of catastrophe, right? Like a flood or a fire and you actually had a lot of experience in your craft and you were truly designing it from scratch, that would be a totally different scenario. But most of us start bit by bit and therefore our stuff is kind of a hodgepodge, a collection, right? Um, that we've amassed over the years and most of us don't have the money to completely replace that. Um, besides, it would be kind of wasteful anyway. So. I trust over the years you've collected the bits and bobs that make up your craft. So if you are looking to reorganize or um, add more function to your sewing space, begin by assigning each little piece of furniture a cutout and then take your graph paper and mark your windows and your doors or, or like if you happen to be in a basement or something, you have some kind of pillar Mark those limitations, right? So you know where your walls are. And then really define, what do I need this piece of furniture to do for me? Like for example, I have a large cutting table, which I labeled here, big top. This is a really great like six foot by four and a half foot tabletop that I got at Ikea a decade ago. I've painted it, I've decoupaged it, I've done all kinds of fun stuff to it. It started on uh, table legs by itself and then it made its way to rolling cart for a couple years and then it finally has made its way on top of another desk that I have. But this is the table that I love to sew at. I can, it's big enough, I can cut out patterns on it. I can really spread out. There's plenty of room on it for whatever I have going on. So this is an important piece that I'm not willing to sacrifice. And so I know this big top, what I need it to do for me is have space. I need it to offer me space. So I don't want to clutter it up too much. I also know I need it to offer me a lot of stability. So I have this desk that has bookshelves under it. And so that I've decided over the years is the best support system for that big top. So I would stack the two of them together and I know for sure my sewing machine is going to be on there. My cutting mats are going to be on there no matter what. Like there's not a better place for them for me. Because I merged really two spaces, I was bringing lots of furniture into this one space. And so I contemplated for a little bit, maybe I have too much furniture in here. But I couldn't pick what I would take out and where I would even put it when I took it out of the space. 
So that's when it occurred to me, I have so much vertical space. This room has like 12 foot ceilings in it. I thought, why don't I consider stacking the furniture to add even more function? And there were a couple places where I was able to do that. And the, the blue desk with the big top, I then took another um, smaller white tabletop that I have, which was just like a, like designed to be like a computer desk. And I took the bookcases, the white bookcases, and I stack those on top of the big top and then put the white tabletop on that. So now I have this regular computer desk as turned into a hutch on my big space. And I was able to, on that top shelf, put my giant roll of Annie soft and stable. And this pleased me so much from a function perspective because I didn't want that soft and stable to end up with a bunch of dog hair on it. And it's such a huge bolt that when it was standing just upright on the floor, usually just be soft and stable with a whole bunch of dog hair on it. So now I have that up safe and out of the way. And I have these shelves where I can put other stuff and keep my sewing surface clear so that I always can come in and start a new project. So that to me really amplified the functionality. I did something similar with the fabric area and I took a little wire bookcase that normally was on the ground and put it on top of a utility table and then I was able to sort my fabric. Um, the fabric I folded and sorted by function as well. I separated the knits from the cottons, from the home decor, from the specialty fabrics and the pre-cuts. And it's not Pinterest worthy, but it's pretty to me. It inspires me. And above all else, I can find what I'm looking for. And then that whole section I just converted into my little fabric station and underneath I have my um, remnants which I've been hanging on to for many many years and I use for little bits and bobs and just sometimes sort through for inspiration and then I'm starting to build back up my cotton stash and so I have those expensive premium quilt weight cottons in baskets folded nice where again I can just thumb through those and get inspiration or find exactly what I'm looking for. So this process here is really meant for you to hone in on function. Instead of trying to make it look pretty, first go for function. And then after you get everything functional, then you can go in and add your little special touches, right? to that space. So I hope that that is helpful for you and I hope it gets you kind of out of that Pinterest perfect mold that we all sometimes find ourselves trying to fit in. And again, just to recap, I really want you to think about how you want to use the space, not the whole space, each little space, right? Like how do you want to use that piece of furniture? what's the best function for that piece of furniture. And so in most sewing spaces, you're gonna need an actual sewing table, a cutting table. If you're in business, you might need a shipping table. You're gonna need space to iron, and then you're gonna need a space for your fabric. And then if there's room left over, you can add those pretty touches that inspire you. Like I have a a seating area and a table where I can journal. I have some little carts to hold all my paper, crafting supplies like the stickers and the planners that I've had in years past. I have a separate little mobile cart that can hold my laptop for when I'm zooming. I do a lot of zooming with our SoSpire patrons and when it's AMC time, um, a lot of times we'll be zooming after the sun goes down. So that little cart gives me the ability to sit in a comfortable chair and optimize my lighting. 
So again, I don't know specifically what your needs are for your space. You're the only person that can say for sure what your needs are. Identify those and then use what you have to the best of your ability and assign functions to your actual pieces of furniture and really think outside the box. Maybe there are things you can stack. Maybe you can repurpose things for you know a, a different purpose than you originally bought it for. Maybe it would serve you in another way. Um, so I hope that you find that interesting. I'd love to know your um, thoughts on stacking furniture and maximizing the potential. So drop that in the comments. And then before I announce the winners for our weekly drawing for the six Sewspire PDF tutorials, I want to give you a little peek at the City Slicker 2 and show you how that's coming along. I'm so pleased with that. I have that right here for you and I was able to make the repair on that. It's just such a gorgeous stable bag. If you haven't had a chance yet to watch the tutorial on Tuesday, it was definitely a challenge to work with all of these layers of interfacing, but it certainly resulted in an absolutely gorgeous exterior. This Tuesday, we're gonna be crafting the interior of that, so I hope you can join me. And then before we say goodbye, I wanna thank everybody for voting in that Facebook poll that I posted. It does seem as if you would prefer I focus on bags and home decor for 2022. So I'm gonna move forward with that and plan out 12 awesome projects for you that are within the scope of bags and accessories and home decor projects. As soon as I finalize those project details, I'm going to be publishing a schedule for the year. So I hope that helps you plan. And now, without further ado, I'd like to announce this week's six winners for the SoSpire six pack of PDF tutorials. I have an Etsy pattern shop, and for my newer designs, I am producing PDFs for those. I will produce a PDF for everything we make in 2022 as well. And so, to celebrate our six years of SoSpire, I am giving away six PDFs to six lucky people every Friday in 2021. And I draw those winners from our Facebook group page members. So if you're not yet a member of the Facebook group page, I'll put the link down in the notes and you can go ahead and join that and then tune in on Fridays to see if you're amongst the lucky winners. You may also want to check back at the last three Friday vlogs because you may have already won and you just don't realize it. So this week's winners are Penny Dyer, Janice Swartz, Tiffany Hillman, Shelly Gades, Annette Gentry, and Cindy Smetters. Congratulations, ladies check the notes of this video you will find a link to my etsy pattern shop you're welcome to pick out six of your favorite pdfs and then please facebook message me so that i know it's you and let me know the six pdfs you would like and your email address and i will deliver those to you just as soon as i see your message i want to thank everybody for joining me I love spending this time with you, especially those of you that show up early during the first play and chat with me in the chat box. I will be back Tuesday, as mentioned, and we're going to sew the interior of the City Slicker 2. So until then, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. I hope you all have a beautiful weekend. Thank you so much for joining me.